Testing, okay. Hello, Miss Donna, can you hear me? Hello? You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes, I can hear you as well. Can you hear Excellent. me? Awesome. Excellent. First time using the Zoom part of this as a thing. This is exciting. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty well. You I look radiant well. as always. I would give you a hug, but you're way <laughs> over there. You. There you are. Same to you. We're waiting for everyone else. Everyone else should be joining shortly. Everyone's, you know, how everyone can be, but it's fun times. Yep. Happy Friday, first and foremost. And same to you. Yes, we are here for another exciting edition of the FL Headquarters podcast. Of course, Donna Jean Phillips of the, you know, your coffee shop is quite the uh, the tasteful morsel, I got to say. My background and all. Delightful, <laughs> delightful. This is my background. Isn't it lovely? And also, well, also delightful. Thank monster you. Mania stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Got the Monster Mania thing and the podcast thing in the background. It's exciting. <laughs> I got three drinks going on. I got tea and coffee mutually. I got the brutality guys in one cup. I got dead sled in the other. We're good to go. <laughs> awesome. I wasn't sure about um, the brutality guys because they're both, especially, oh gosh, I'm so bad with names. Uh, I'm remembering uh, Adam, uh, but she's very timid. And often doesn't, because I'm always going and doing shout outs, you know. I do the same thing. Hello, Mark. And, uh, One second. Mark's here shout-out. too now. Can you hear him? Hey, Mark. Can you hear us? I can see his face. I can see him. Hi, Mark. Can you hey hear there. Him? How's everybody? There's Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, excellent. Oh, look at that. It's uh, three people anyway so far. And we've got more people coming in here and there. They'll trickle in. Mark, you know All Donna right. Jean, correct? Absolutely. Hello there again. How are you doing? Excellent. I always enjoy your hugs whenever I see you at uh, the Monster Mania. It's one of the many things I look forward to. It's the the best part of uh, getting together with the family, I think. Yes. I believe yep. that. That's true. <laughs> I know it's always uh, it's always so tiring uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But then when I wake up Monday, I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss these guys for. You know, I'm always looking at the calendar, finding out when the next one's going to be. So, without a doubt. And now we have five a year. Five. Yeah. Five. yeah. <laughs> That's some crazy stuff. It's very exciting, though, too. Um, very much so. <laughs> so, you know, what I thought what we'd do tonight is one of the things we could do is talk about how we originally found Monster Mania and what makes us, one of the things that introduced us and how we kind of keep what makes us keep coming back and stuff like that. I think right now is indication kind of what brings us here is that kind of family light atmosphere. We call it the unofficial family reunion because we have brothers and sisters come all over the place every time there's a monster media. And you're right, there are four this year, which we're excited five. for. Five, five, that's right, five this year. So Dave ah. pulled that out. So, to inter- well, you got to include the Oaks show, even though it's not in a hotel. Yeah, it's still it's, it's still, still part of Monster Mania. Yeah. Yeah. So, Donna, why don't you start ladies first, I suppose? <laughs> oh, um, did you, should I just start chatting or did you want to wait for the other well, people? Well, yeah, why don't we wait for more people because I think it, that would probably be better off because that way there one could do it all at once because we're not sure when not everyone else will be coming in, but they'll be trickling in here and there and i know what time frame because it's only seven o'clock and some people you is know. this uh live or are you recording it and airing it later i am going to be now i'm going to be editing i'm going to be recording it now and then i'm going to be editing it and putting it in it'll be up you know the new thing because this is a whole new platform because people wanted the yeah. live interviews they wanted the video stuff yeah. actually <laughs> i don't even i don't for my show i don't like to do live because we had one air tonight mm. And when I was talking to him, he has like um, a YouTube series. Uh-huh. So if it was not live, we were able to put in the trailer of his YouTube series mm. and put in photos and stuff that we talked about during it. So I really like doing that. Yeah. Plus the fact that, you know, I have a lot of cats. If one of my cats comes up on my lap and knocks off a flower <laughs> pot that I have behind here, which is why I don't have a flower pot anymore. <laughs> Got yeah, a skull edit, instead. Yeah, I got you. Oh, sure. Here he is. Kitty. A special <laughs> cameo. When is he kind of when he's gonna make his Monster Mania debut? 
Oh, Hibble doesn't come with me. He stays oh. at home. Oh, he's got to watch the house for the rest of the ghosts at home? Yeah, my husband, who is not a cat person, watches my three. Uh, and, and another person. It's the feral cats that I take care of. You got so. you. <laughs> he doesn't love the cats, but he loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Jennifer. There she is. Yay. Did everyone hear her? Yay, that's exciting. <laughs> I told you I know people by face. I'm a face yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. Happy Friday, everyone, first and foremost. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Kitty Hibble says he loves you. Kitty cats. Excellent. <laughs> yep, everyone's drinking their stuff. That's cool stuff, too. Mark, do you have your drink, too? I do. It's right here in my uh, Camp Crystal Lake. Uh... Oh, look at that. Yes. <laughs> All right, epic. At least you're awesome. you're, you're spotting the spotting the uh, the looks. That's a good thing too. Oh yeah, you got the terrifier there too. Got to have art. Lovely. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I don't know how many more. Well, I'm sure more people will be joining here and there, and who knows when uh, the the big rigs will be popping in eventually. I'm sure the time time management type of things, but they'll be popping in eventually. Uh, I did talk to Doug, and uh, we all know how Doug likes to be spontaneous and kind of pops up out of nowhere. So be on our toes. I know Doug will be here eventually, at least one of the others maybe soon as well. Well, it is one of the positive sides, too, about editing it and not having it live, is the fact that if long periods of time go by of people just kind of rambling to kill some time, you can cut that out. Of course. Of course. <laughs> one of the plus sides. Not that that's ever happened to me. Right? Yeah, I know, right? We all learn from the I have, I have a best. tendency to ramble, so. Well, that's okay. We all have a tendency to do that sometimes. You should hear half of my podcasts <laughs> when, I, when it's just me. <laughs> when it's just me, I ramble a lot. <laughs> and then it's a matter of how much can you ramble. I usually ramble anywhere from a uh, half hour to two hours straight, and that's, that's quite the rambling. <laughs> Uh, so now the new software, I don't have to worry about that as much because I can edit, as I said, and make it a little bit more cleaner and nicer and cool backgrounds. And we have a nice video that we can share with the world as well so we can see all the lovely people we talk to, which make is also sure exciting. You, um, you know, I run that horror convention and event group on Facebook. Yes. So make sure you let me know when this is going to go live because I Oh, we absolutely. only post about conventions there. I don't post memes and stuff, which gets some people unhappy. But um, <laughs> you don't need memes. It, Convention stuff is more important anyway. You need the meat everything. and potatoes. So right. I'll post this this over there too, since we're all talking sure. about. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. That's it. that is what we're here for. Talking about Monster Mania, getting ready for the next event, and also you know celebrating it a little bit, and also doing some of the little. Um, for people who've never been to a Monster Mania or been to a convention, we're going to maybe tackle some of those things, give some people some survival tips on how to make it kind of a fun atmosphere. And what sets Monster Mania aside from many others? So what I thought we could do is, um, since there's you know, a few of us right now, how about we start by telling some of the stories now, since there's more than, you know, four, there's four of us right now, more people will trickle in. And when we need to recap, we can. And um, what we can do is take turns telling kind of what brought us to Monster Mania to begin with. Um, so, Donna Jean, how about we start with you, ladies first? <laughs> um, well, I actually started attending Monster Mania. I didn't, I went to my very first conventions ever when I was very young, um, but I'm not very young anymore. Uh, in fact, I'll be 60 in March, right around the Monster Mania show. <laughs> but um, I went a number of years. I did not go to shows because I had my daughter when I was 18. And, you know, I didn't have the money to be doing this and that. So my very first Monster Manias I went to, I went to with my daughter when she was in art school in Philadelphia. So she and I started going and all of a sudden it was just like, wow, my God, this is amazing. And then um, a couple of years later, and this is actually what got me involved with the family that is Monster Mania. Um, I ended up, well, I had, I had cancer 12 years ago. And one of the people that I heard from every day, one of the few people, I will say, it was lung cancer, was Dave Hagen. And um, 
a couple of years after that, I ended up being in the hospital having to have three feet of my colon out. Nobody knew why. Um, but they had to do the surgery in two days, which left me in a coma for eight days. And when I woke up from the coma, I had to relearn how to walk and all this stuff. Again, I heard from Dave Hagen every day. And in fact, it was the week of Hunt Valley, I got out of the hospital. And he said to me, look, I know you're, you're having a hard time, but throw on your sweats and come to the show and come see your family. So I did, and I had my walker, and I had my two friends who were both nurses. And um, the first person I ran to was Kane. And Kane recognized me from coming to the shows. And Kane just like moved the walker aside and just held me and just said, this is not permanent. You're just gonna keep going. You're just gonna keep pushing. You don't give up, you just keep moving. And that was when I knew I belonged there. You know, um, and in fact, after that, Kane's my family. He has no choice. <laughs> um, so really, it, the, when you're very, very ill, when you have cancer, people disappear. I think they get scared and they go away. And the one person that did not disappear was Dave Hagen. So yeah. Monster Mania are family to me. Yeah, That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And we're glad to have you, Donna. Yeah, it's a great always, story. It's always great to see you, and you're always so welcoming, and you make it you know, a joy to see you um, whenever you come. And it's, it is a joy. And I can speak to that same thing. Dave Hagen goes above and beyond for his family because he knows the regular people who are his family. And it doesn't matter if you're one of the many people who just come as a guest time and time again or a person who is like us who have crossed over into the staff realm. He treats everyone with that same respect and like everyone's part of the family. And Dave is an extension of our family, so are the Hagens in general. So I can speak to that the same. Um, Mark, why don't you go next? Tell us your how you became part of Monster Mania. Um, yeah, my my wife and I, uh, my wife used to be a reporter for a, a Bucks County, Pennsylvania newspaper. And she got somehow free tickets to a, uh, a Monster Mania event in Cherry Hill. This was many, many years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, so we both went. We both, you know, love scary movies. So it seemed to be the perfect, you know, atmosphere for us. So we went and just had a, a absolutely wonderful time. You know, met a lot of great stars, met a lot of great people. And uh, after that, I we just went away for a while we didn't uh, go to any more events and then we heard about another cherry hill event we're like peace let's you know let's go back and you know do that again and uh and we got there incredibly early the show hadn't started yet but there were volunteers around so i was talking with a volunteer and they're like oh you should come out and you know be a volunteer and they were telling me about all the great people all the great benefits of, of being a, a volunteer and part of the monster mania family uh so i you know, got in touch with, uh, with you know, Jen, uh, and uh, she she hooked me up into the into the volunteer, and it's, it's just been a what uh, just a great experience. Just you know, couldn't uh, couldn't love the people more, the the cosplayers, the you know, the stars that come out, the the people that come out, all the you know, the other volunteers. Just an incredible atmosphere, and just it's like a no other like no other family you'll ever have. That's true. Well, Mark, we're glad to have you too, and it's always a joy to see you as well. One of the many people who always make me feel welcome when I hear the jazz. I know that Mark's not too far away, and that's awesome to see you <laughs> always. Jen, how about we go with you next? I'll go last, because everyone's heard my story many times on this show. Well, you're next, my friends. Okay, um, I guess. Um, I just started going. Um, always been a horror fan um, since... I can remember. Uh, again, I think like many of us that go to the different conventions, it's very cool vendors. Um, the items that you can find that you can't find anywhere else um, or just supporting any potential friends that may be vendors or just the general people that that's how they're feeding their family and paying their bills and they're putting a lot of their heart into all of that. So it's always an exciting time to, to walk the vendor alleys and, and talk to them and, and hear their stories. And actually it was Doug for me. Um, <laughs> I had run into Doug a few times and 
um, I, he just said that he thought I would be perfect on the team. And uh, I happily jumped into it. And I think it's been a really awesome thing since then. Uh, I like helping people and it's, you know, in my, in my work, like my big girl work and uh, big life, um, I don't have anybody that knows any of my references. You know, they don't get my jokes. Uh, <laughs> and, oh, uh, you know, it, it's nice to be around, you know, very similarly, I guess just people that have the same, see it the same way and have the same joy and um, excitement to be around a lot of people and, and just have that same energy going. Uh, Cause I do think it's, it's interesting for being, you know, a horror convention. Everyone's just so nice, <laughs> you know, they they give hugs and it's like, you know, you're seeing people that you just absolutely adore and yep. it, it's so fun. And I don't know. I just, I absolutely love it. And uh, I look forward to every single one. So, and you're also you're also one of those people that I also recognize from many times coming there, and you're also very welcoming. You are very much part of the team as well, and I agree with that a hundred percent. It you. is. In one of the things I've always said about Monster Mania and the horror convention in general, or conventions in general, it's the one place that people like us can actually rejoice in one place and not be ridiculed like everyone else in the world likes to. It's the one place where we we are accepted. It doesn't matter if you're a Freddy fan or a Jason fan, a Michael Myers fan. Everyone is inclusive and everyone treats you with the same amount of fun and respect. I very rarely have seen someone argue or about things like, you know, over, you know, petty things like who's better, Fred, excuse me, Freddy or Jason. I've never seen that. Although I've heard stories if you go to a Star Wars convention or a Star Trek convention, you better not bring up the opposite because it'll be an all-out war. <laughs> Supposedly. I have not I... been to one of those. I've been to Comic-Con, which is kind of a bit, kind of a smorgasbord of a little bit of everything. But I think one of the things about Monster Mania is, number one, the people make it to be the, what it is. And everybody's there. You have the punk kids, you have the goth kids, you have the hardcore heavy metal guys with the spikes on their jackets. You've right. got, um, you know, long hippie skirts, gorgeous ladies. I mean, it's like every single walk of life that you can have are there. You have kids, you have um, people that are way up in the age brackets also. I mean, you have people in wheelchairs, you have people that are not, you know, it's it's the whole gamut and maybe some some pets if you get to you know some people even bring their service animals so sure. it's, it's when robert um, england is there they have babies dressed like freddy and yeah. it's hilarious yeah seeing a baby freddy <laughs> <laughs> and seeing his interaction with them is priceless as well because if if People have often asked me, you know, who who the best person is to meet at one of these things, and and that's kind of hard at Monster Mania because there's many great guests that we have had. A lot of the repeat guests we've had, there's a reason why they keep coming back. There's a reason why Dave keeps inviting them is because they're so welcoming. Because really, the most approachable people on the planet, they look like they'd be really freaky. And you know what's funny about the Monster Mania, the Monster Mania in general? I think to people outside of our bubble, outside of our realm. A lot of people would see someone who's like a punk rocker or someone like Jen described and be like, well, I'm not going to talk to them. They, they're very, uh, they're like, they're, they must be creeps and this, that, and the other thing. Well, maybe a little, there might be some truth to being a creep, but not in that type of sense. <laughs> I have to say. It's our kind of creep. I, yeah. I uh, followed the Grateful Dead around the country when I was younger and my boyfriend was a punk rocker. So we were always kind of freaks. <laughs> yeah, but we're accepting freaks, you know. And one of the things about it is most people in society would often look at people like that and be quick to dismiss us because clearly someone who's a horror fan can't like, can't be someone who's sophisticated, can't be someone who's a brain, can't be someone who, you know, is successful. But yet, if that was the case... As the ghosts like to work up, I live in a haunted house, so they love to play games with me once in a while, so that's fun. Anyway, <laughs> added bonus. Probably check on the audio later. I'll have another guest. Anyway, sorry. But one of the things that kind of, you know, people outside of our kind of realm and outside of our bubble, 
they would look at us like, you know, they're not accepted, but we're the, probably the nicest people you'll meet. Um, I think the same thing comes from my wrestling background. A lot of people look at wrestlers as being someone, a lot of people look at wrestlers like they're meatheads and that they don't have any brains and that they're just kind of guys who go out to the ring and pretend to do moves and they're not really tough or they're not really strong or they're not real athletes. And the same thing can be said about the horror fans or the horror community. Like, oh, they can't be, they're doing horror stuff because they can't, you know, do real jobs. Well, what's a real job? <laughs> They're all do the best jobs possible. They're all put on great performances when it comes to, you know, these roles. I think what's great is the Oscars and the Emmys and all of these award shows are now starting to implement the, you know, they're starting to get, actually recognize stunt people for their art, for their stunt work. That's a new kind of a thing they just added. I honestly think people like Kane Hodder and Tyler Maine and Robert England should be people who should be considered for those awards. Robert England probably is someone who should be, you know, really acknowledged for something like that. Same thing with Malcolm McDowell. And the list can go on and on. You know, People... and we're living at a time, though, because of Terrifier 2, where Absolutely. indie films are taking on, uh, are taking, people are taking notice. Absolutely. You know, because they have to. That's opened up a whole new genre. And, of course, the Terrifier crew are going to be at... The next two monster manias that's true and they were actually at the last one too which is exciting yep. and you know and that's exactly true terrifier 2 really did something a lot of people probably don't understand because what they did for filmmakers and they they crashed through the barriers and crashed through the walls and showed that this little film and i believe terrifier 2 had some crowdfunding as well mm -hmm. so they, they were, were completely the, crowdfunded yeah mm -hmm. They were the little engine that could. They were the little engine could, not only that could, that did. And the fact that they got so much press and they went global and they got as big as they were is really put, helps independent filmmakers around the world show them that if they can do it, we can too. So ultimately speaking, it's really a sign of history that Terrifier 2 has done okay. what it's done. It's not even so much the fact that it's a, a horror film. It's a horror film that broke barriers and did exactly what everyone didn't expect it to do. And that's what's impressive about the whole thing. And Damien really, I mean, he had, um, he had like tables in the vendor area. Mm -hmm. I remember years and years ago, um, after yep. the original Terrifier mm -hmm. came out. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, you know, he was working so hard to get that out there so that when this happened, it was, it was, um, Epic. Absolutely. It was. And that's exactly what you want as a filmmaker. And I often wonder what it's like. I mean, I've been in the predicament where I've showed a film and I know how awesome that feels. But for him to have that kind of exposure, but also not only that, but break and make history. That's something really that should be celebrated, even more so than just it's a scary, great movie. And then Art the Clown might be the new, the modern day uh, Robert England. He might be the the all-in horror icon of the of the modern times. No, and it couldn't happen to nicer people. Yeah, they're all it couldn't fantastic. Be nicer people than Damien, David, Lauren. They're they're just the first interview I did with them for my show, Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror, um, yep. was three years ago, <laughs> and we were talking about they were filming it. We were talking about that then. So it, it's like seeing them. And they were with me like they are with everybody, just good, nice people, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just kind of blown away themselves by <laughs> the recognition, which is so great to see. It is. And, it, and it's special and it's awesome that that, you know, that's really a sign of the horror. That's kind of a win in the horror community's checkbox, more so than these, you know, 700, you know, rom-coms that have been out for years. And I think Lauren being as outspoken as she is on many things has been brilliant because it's definitely, it's A, keeping the horror world in focus, mm -hmm. continuously keeping it going. However, it's hitting some very important um, aspects of that. Um, and then Catherine Cochran wrote that amazing article. If you haven't read that, that's absolutely amazing. Um, about her hacksaw scene in Terrifier and what that meant and why it was so vital 
Um, and Lauren's been amazing on Twitter and other platforms, really um, kind of putting people in, in a very good place and maybe having them reevaluate potentially what they're they're thinking and seeing the difference of like horror versus what maybe some people view it as. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's exactly true. Mm. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I fixed my computer so I can see you guys all better. That's exciting. Technical. Cool. Um, no, that's absolutely true. And one of the things I'm very happy about is right after uh, Monster Mania back in um, Oak, Pennsylvania, I actually told them all to their face, uh, congratulated them at, during their little panel thing. Thankfully, I was off. Knock on wood. But um, I had actually, well, I, I congratulated them on their success and stuff like that. And I also told them that I was going to make them all wrestlers because uh, David, David Howard Thornton had said, said, we should be in the new Mortal Kombat game. Well, I got home and my son had already made Art the Clown for our YouTube show. And we already had all that. And I was happy that I was able to kind of share that match with everyone else. And I actually followed through with the whole um, you know, the mixed tag thing that I said I was going to do. And I think what's important is to take our times like that and to, you know, back up our words when we say we're going to do things. And I think that's what's amazing, too. So, yeah, good times. Exciting. So, we got waiting more. I'm sure more people will be coming eventually. Everyone, not everyone can be fat. You know how it works. Everyone likes to make their own entrances. That's how that usually goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I like it. It's fun. <laughs> so. Have you guys noticed that the nicest people in the world that you want to meet are the ones who pay, play the biggest, baddest, like, serial killers? Yeah, isn't that amazing how that works? I do find that quite a bit. And that's actually the same thing in like wrestling, for example. It's the same idea. Like the nastiest villain, the nastiest bad guy you could ever meet is usually the nicest guy in the locker room. But the opposite can be said about the guys who are really good too. Uh, so I've seen that in different realms. That's actually true. And then it's also funny is a lot of the people, actually, I think the horror conventions is a great example of when you look at someone. And one of the things that you can do with these shows is really take life lessons in. And one of the things I'm very proud about and happy for is that Monster Mania gave, gave a real life example of something that could easily go over someone who wasn't something, someone who could see something like a learning a life lesson. Like, for example, it's really important, even if, you know, you hear something about so-and-so being a mean person or someone who had a bad experience with someone, it's really important to find out for yourself and, ha and give that moment for yourself. If it's someone you're really passionate about meeting or talking to or getting to know, I do encourage people to you know, follow through with that. Because in this world, you only have so much and you only have so many opportunities. One of the great things about Monster Mania in general, these pop culture conventions as a whole, what they give us is the opportunity to meet these icons, to meet these legends, to rub elbows with these people. And I, for me, who you know has worked in film and serious things, I like to give my, my respect to the people who kind of inspired me to get into this whole world. And one of the things that I found for myself, I needed to learn that I can't listen to what everyone else tells me about someone. I need to find out for myself because I've had both sides of the spectrum. I've met people that everyone says, oh, they're fantastic people. But I had an altercation with one of those people at a Monster Mania of all places. But, you know, that was quickly resolved. And I haven't seen that person again. And I don't think he or his I know his father won't be back. But anyway, um, needless to say, not everyone has that experience with that person. But in the same sense, I was told something about um, um, John Hurd the legendary John Hurd when he was at Monster Mania, that he was mean, he was arrogant, he was this, you know, grouchy old man. But when I went to meet him, it wasn't that at all. I didn't find that to be the case. And also, what I did see is they had him, seeing how we're all part of the Monster Mania crew, we know kind of the layouts of Cherry Hill, kind of, for the most part. Some things don't change, <laughs> which is a good thing for us because it doesn't take us long to kind of bounce back into the swing of things. They can say, go to the ballroom, go to the agent, go to the gallery. We'll usually know where that is. 
and they had John Hurd in the ballroom, which is kind of where, every, uh, or the tent, as they call it sometimes, where pretty much everyone is, right? That big, giant open tent. They had him on one wall, and they had, like, Chandler Riggs back when he was on the show, way back when, but they had him on the opposite side of the wall. And this is at the height of the Walking Dead craze, when everyone wanted the Walking Dead, and Carl was one of the biggest things going in the Walking Dead. He wasn't gone yet. <laughs> but... What happened had want, was is that when I went into the room and I could see that John Hurd was no line in front of him at all, just walk up to John Hurd, where Chandler Riggs, and again, because you guys are familiar with Cherry Hill, you'll kind of understand this a little bit better than most, his line started at the back wall, went up the, up the, uh, through the little room there to a certain point, then up the hallway, <laughs> up that ramp, outside around the building wrapped around and started at the other side of the pool for Chandler Riggs oh kitty another kitty we got another kitty cameo <laughs> look at that so oh kitty look at that we got two kitties now I wish I had a cat now oh well <laughs> just a ghost no big deal <laughs> so anywho um but the moral, you know when I went into that room and Chandler Riggs is on their line has that long line and then John Hurd who has been in the business of movie making for years and he's been part of some of the most iconic films of all time and bid some big things big beaches um you know the list goes on and on for john hurt home alone for those people who are like the millennial kind of people john hurt is someone people have known for years so i mean even if he was in a bad mood the time the person had met him i could almost understand a little bit of a kind of how he felt in the way where you know here's this kid who's just started in the business and he's got this line going around the building and people aren't even walking up to talk to me that one of the reasons i went up and talked to him for as long as i did and i didn't have that experience because i went up to him like i do with everyone with respect with the same respect i share with everybody until i'm proven not to be which i've never had to worry about except for that one time <laughs> and then you know from there's you know history on that and i I'm happy I did that because not long after that, we all got the word that unfortunately John Hurd is no longer with us. And if I had listened to the people at Monster Mania, not, not you know, the staff, but the people who met him, I probably wouldn't have had that opportunity because I would have said, oh, well, they said he's mean, so I guess he's mean, rather than meet him for myself. And I'm glad that I did that. And I do encourage people to do that because you only have if there's ever someone you're at a, an event like this and you say well i really want to meet this person but i'll see them next time or i'll say hi to them next time next show listen this this world this life i think one of the things that people need to be aware of is no one's guaranteed tomorrow and when you're working in this business in the horror world and whatever else you're talking about people who've been around the world quite a bit um, jo how I mean Robert England, even though he acts sometimes like he's twenty five year old kid, Robert England's up there in the in the world. Kane Hodder, even though he can still act like he's twelve or nineteen or twenty, it probably still has the energy that he had when he was that age. He's still up there in age. Same thing goes for a lot of those other guys. But you know, in his cases like John Hurd or the late great George Romero, when he was there. Carrie Fisher when she was around or and granted I'm not overly fond of the whole Carrie Fisher thing myself just because I know the when I this is before I was even part of Monster Media staff but I remember things that changed with Carrie Fisher but I'm not going to take that experience away from someone who enjoyed that moment meeting her you know but the same thing goes for all of these other legends that Dave brings in for the fans and for everyone else to enjoy I might add. <laughs> so there's all that. Um, so actually, just had a quick question for you guys before we continue. Does anybody else know if anyone else needs a um, this code? Does anybody know if anyone needs this who might not have it? Out of curiosity. I do not know. Okay, I know I share it with a lot of people. I'm just waiting. It doesn't matter. I mean, we'll, it was, we're here for a couple anyway, just to make sure um, I don't miss anybody in case, you know, whatever. I know it's out there, so <laughs> you never know. But, hey, you know, anybody could pop in at any point. Did it, Dan, Jen, Dave, Doug, probably all of them at the same time. You know how it goes. <laughs> Spot checking. <laughs> That's awesome. So now, 
So you guys are all going to be there in March, I'm guessing, correct? Yes. Now, out of curiosity, just because I want to give people a kind of a general idea, you don't have to exactly, don't go into details, but what states do you guys all come from, if you don't mind sharing that? I'm that, Maryland. Maryland. I'm Pennsylvania. I'm Pennsylvania as well. I'm from Ma neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts in uh, up in well, just moved got a house in a uh, place in Rhode Island now, but it was originally from Boston. Uh, I have to so, say, my daughter lives and son-in-law live in Cherry Hill, oh, so they are twenty minutes from the. They know they live. They live twenty minutes from Cherry Hill. Oh, so, awesome. yeah, if I go and I visit her. Then, which I'm going to do when we have the staff meeting, visit her and then go from there. That's awesome. So that's quite convenient. Definitely. That's awesome. One of the reasons I ask that is because I wanted to give people an idea generally how, where, how far people come to be part of this community. And I know Jen, who kind of is the, you know, the kind of the overseer of all of us, she comes from all the way in Florida mm -hmm. <laughs> to be part of Monster Mania. And everyone comes from all over the other places. Um, does anybody we know have a who lot lives... of New Jersey? A lot of New Jersey, quite a few New Jerseyans. Um, does anybody know who? If anybody know of anybody who comes the furthest, I don't even know. Um, I think you and Alex. Alex is Massachusetts as well. Yep, Alex is also new. Alex is one yep. of my neighbors. Yeah, he's not too. Actually, he's a little bit southern. Southern. I know where okay. Alex is. He's in the. Uh, he's in the nice area there. <laughs> School stuff. I, know I, I actually have, um... love the Hunt Valley show. And for me, the Hunt Valley show is the closest. I also love the show, you know, mm -hmm. because it's so chill. Yeah. But it's the it's an hour for me, you know, which is so much more convenient than sure. two and a half hours. <laughs> sure. Five hours for us if we drive. When we drive, it's five hours. But we learned that taking the train is actually quicker and cheaper, not as and not as expensive as my people might think it is. Because um, when you kind of factor in tolls, gas, then stopping to get something to eat or stopping to use a restroom and whatever, we usually leave the house early in the morning and we usually show up. We probably get there at about noon. We get to the actual general area and then however long it takes to get to the hotel or wherever it's going to be. Um, but so does everyone kind of have like their own kind of what they do to prepare for the the, for Monster Mania, because I'm just curious if everyone has kind of a, a different preparation when they go, or if everyone kind of does their own thing. Well, what's yours to give us an example of what you mean? Well, okay, for, for example, for me, when I get ready for Monster Mania, because it's not just me, because that's not only me who goes, to March anyway. March is the whole family thing. Reason being is when I celebrate my birthday. So for my birthday, everyone, gen as a general rule, goes to Cherry Hill once a year for us for my birthday. So uh, for us, we, um, you know, after we get all the other things, getting everything ready, what I personally do is I get make a list of, you know, bef you know, even before, before or after staff. Some things you just don't stop doing. You just get used to it. I make a list of the people I want to, you know, meet and stuff like that. And I make a budget. That's probably one of the first things I do is make a budget for, you know, how much am I going to need for X amount of things. And then I plan double that because that's an important thing to know. <laughs> Whatever you plan on spending, bring extra because you're going to really need it. Um, even if, you know, you have a general idea, you gotta, it's always good to, you know, have extra just in case. So after that, I come, we kind of go to the train. We, well, before I would drive, so it would just be as simple as we get, everyone stays in one general area the night before. And then we go down from there. We leave early in the morning. Everyone gets in the, tr in the car and we drive. Uh, for us, for example, I leave from, you know, Boston, Rhode Island area. So we usually, you know, I'll drive straight until we get to Connecticut. Um, reason being is because, you know, I've, you know, the kids were younger then, so, you know, they have to use the lavatory or the bathroom or eat or whatever. So, because one of the things I do is bring like donut holes or something for everyone to kind of, you know, snack on in between everything on the way down there. My daughter gets car sick, so she's usually sleeping anyway. My son, my wife, my wife usually falls asleep too, but my son usually is the one to keep me awake and whatnot as my wife just walked in. Isn't that lovely? She's worked all day. Hi, honey. Hey, wife. <laughs> They said hi, honey. 
She waved. She works in retail, so we all know how she feels right now. And it's Friday, and it rained out here. Snow. Snow now. Sorry. She just told me it's snowing now. Anywho, um, <laughs> she'll be there in March so you guys can see her. And my son as well. But anyway, um, like I said, so that's when we kind of get together. I pack probably a week before we leave just so I have everything ready. Mm -hmm. I have all my laundry ready to go. I have everything packed. <laughs> cool. My wife doesn't magically show up in the background. That's exciting. She walked right through my Monster Mania thing here. That's kind of cool. Anyway, magical. Anyway, uh, so I, I pack a week before, and then I, after I already have all of my kind of what I'm going to be doing, I head down, and then because I get bored easily. Now, before I would drive, and driving I love anyway. I don't get stressed out. A lot of people do. I'm not one of those people. Um, usually, you know, I'm the one singing. I'm probably the nightmare, you know, when it comes to, the, you know, people who, when you think of dads and car trips, yeah, that's me. I'm the guy who sings and starts the carpool. <laughs> I'm probably the original creator of the carpool karaoke. Um, and then the other thing I found, a lot of people kind of get muffed with, you know, traffic and things like that. And I'll be honest with you, I usually don't see traffic. One of the reasons we leave early is so we don't get as much. We don't really see traffic until we get to, to the beginning of the GW Bridge in New York. Because that area can be kind of crazy so much so that people are walking on the highway selling headphones. Literally, that's the thing in New York. <laughs> that's the thing. But what I found is I, I did a thing where I kind of make little jokes and stuff like that about the, all the cars. And I'll make these like little side stories. So now everyone's laughing in the car. And you'd be amazed how that works. As, as soon as everyone's laughing and having a good time, the, the, you know, the line moves and there's no traffic. We end up in Jersey, no problem. So then we get there, uh, always the day before. We always show up on Thursday because I learned my lesson a long time ago. You go in the day before. And I, what we did last year, actually two years ago, we actually works. If we go in the day before always, but we leave the day after now. And that came from a tip from one of our guest Monster Mania family members who uh, suggested that because on Mondays, it's quiet. Everyone's mostly gone. It is easier to check in and out. There's less, less traffic. So we leave the next day. Um, but when it's by myself, I'll leave on Sunday because what's the sense of me sticking around? So I'll just head back up there. But um, that was before. Now we've discovered the train. And the train's a little quicker. I don't have to worry about stopping in, stop and go. We just show up. At the, we all stay at the same place the night before. We go down to the train station together. We wait for the train. We go on the train and... People who want to sleep and sleep. I do my writing and or whatever else I'm going to do, mostly writing. And uh, show up on Thursday. Check in. And there you go. That's that's our usual thing. So that being said, how about you guys? Well, I guess I can start since I didn't want to jump in on top of anybody else. Um, you know... I have kind of a crazy life <laughs> and I don't have a lot of downtime in my crazy life. And my husband and I have our own business. So when we're home, we're working anyway. And um, so really uh, it was different. Now I've probably been attending Monster Manias for like 20 something years <laughs> because my daughter is going to be 42. We also are all March babies. Um, mm -hmm. She'll be 42 and I'll be 60. And we always celebrate. She'll come out at least one day to the monster mania and hey. <laughs> we'll do stuff together. Um, it was different. I think when I had a less crazy life and when I was just attending now, and since I've been volunteering and I do a lot of shows, um, I actually, my, my planning really comes down to the photo ops, letting the volunteer coordinator know what photo ops I have once the schedule comes out <laughs> and saying I'm going to have to duck out yeah. unless I'm scheduled around them. <laughs> um, and really, it's like I do agree with the budgeting. And what I do is I'll bring what cash I feel I can comfortably have to spend. And if I spend that, I don't get any more out. <laughs> and that's for really, I've always done that because Smart. that makes sense. That way I'm not spending money I really need for other things. Absolutely. Um, I write out lists for my very patient husband about what to do with the cats because I have my own three cats and then I care for a feral colony. 
<laughs> and uh, really, for me, that's kind of about it. And then just scheduling about being there. The I like to say my my intention is always to pack a week early, and the reality is is I'm usually packing two days to the day before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like. I have my own sense of style, and I know what I like to wear. Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to what's the weather, long right. sleeves or short sleeves. <laughs> so I don't know. Mine is not near as, I, I guess, I just do, I've been doing it for a long time because I'm old. So I do it by the seat of the pants, and it works. <laughs> as my grandmother used to say, you're only as old as you feel. And I got to tell you, you probably have more energy than I do half the time. So you got to give you that at least. <laughs> so yeah. a lot yeah, of the times sure. I feel a hundred when you must, when you are, I would think that you were no more than 20 something years old. <laughs> so it, I hope that I have your energy <laughs> when I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Jennifer, when she gets to be 26, cause she's only 19 herself. When she get, when you guys get there, we'll be there, you know? <laughs> Mark and I got ways to go. We're just, you know, we're just getting there. Oh, I will say, and I'm going to butt this in because anybody who's watching this, I think this is important. Yes. If you know you're going to go to a Monster Mania, make sure you make your hotel reservations as soon as you know you're going to go. Absolutely. Because the hotels sell out. Yes, they do. And that is something that I do. I'll, I'll get the room, and then I have, um, I have a friend or two, unless my daughter is coming to stay with me at the Cherry Hill shows, in which case she and her husband will stay and that's wonderful and great but if i don't then i'll ask my one or two friends if they who are also volunteers if they want to be roommates and that splits the cost mm -hmm. so really in terms of that planning that's not necessarily right before the show that's as soon as i know i'm going to go yeah that's exactly that's a good point because you do need to have that as well i actually <laughs> I was trying to find out what's going on as far as the hotels go for everything else after this March because me and my infinite wisdom, I remember to make sure March is all set, but I'm actually going to start planning for the other ones as well because I don't, I, I wasn't sure what was going on with those because I know that last year they had that staff room thing and I don't know if that's something they're doing again this year and they said it's only for, for um, Hunt Valley and the Oak. I don't know if they're doing that again or not, but what I think I'm going to do, much like you just said, I'm going to book the rooms anyway. Worst kind of worse, I split the room with, you know, a few of the other staff guys because, you know, we're all there for together anyway. It does cut the cost, but also at least you're already there. You don't have to worry about it because that's the most important thing is making sure you're there. So I agree with that. Smart. <laughs> Great tip. I think it's important too not to only have like I, I see on some of the posts that like because um you know like Lauren can't come to the March one but it's for amazing things like it's mm -hmm. it's so awesome that she can't come yeah um but there are people that you know well I'm not coming now yeah <laughs> you know be flexible mm -hmm. understand things happen um and look at all the other amazing stuff that we have going on and, and i think just be open to things like that and i think that they've shown time and time again like you know we we lose lauren but look who came in right you know we we um one of the final girls can't come so we got a different final girl you know right. there's just there's you know there's it may be disappointing but it shouldn't be the I'm not coming now, you know, Absolutely. like I, I'm hoping that they'll see that there's there's so much more reasons to come um, and fun and uh, just an, a, just a good time in general. Absolutely. And I think that's a good point, Jennifer, as well, because do you prefer Jennifer or Jen. So it doesn't I, so matter. You know. Some people call me JC. Some people call me Jen. Some people call me Jennifer. Just what don't do you, call me Jenny. What would you like to be called? How about them apples? <laughs> um, Jen. Jen. All right, Jen. I like Jen. Jen's easy to remember. <laughs> Donna Jean. You're going to be Donna Jean because you're Donna Jean. <laughs> Is that okay? And Mark Mark's Mark. Mark. And Mark's Mark. <laughs> right, yeah, Mark? Just me. Yeah. <laughs> just Mark. Just don't call, call me late Mark. for supper. I'm jazz for the most part. Most people outside of my immediate family call me jazz anyway, so that's usually what I am for the most part. And, but in general, but Jen made a good point there in that in one of the things that I've seen a lot of the time is that people throw these 
middle temper tantrums over what I call small potatoes. Um, so-and-so isn't there, or so-and-so is going to be there, or oh, the price is ridiculous, or the lines are ridiculous, and it becomes the Monster Mania's fault for everything. And they oversee all the other amazing things that are there. And I've seen that, I mean, I've seen that many times at mo my time over there at Monster Mania, and I've usually... <laughs> Before I was staff, I usually got into, you know, because I'm very protective of my Monster Mania family, especially the Hagans, when people, and they do it a lot, and they talk down upon the, the show, or the Hagans, or the, oh, they're just money hung, money, you know, grounding people, and how mean are they, and I, I my ears perk up, and I get annoyed by that, because these people are upset because they got to wait in line to meet someone. Um, people remember a couple of years ago, there was that whole thing at Cherry Hill when it was supposedly the most crowded show of all time and people had to call the fire marshal and all these other horrible things that people had to say. I was at that show and that was before I was a staff member. But same thing goes for my family. We were all there. We've been through that song and dance before. We knew what Monster Mania was. We knew how to plan everything. We had the VIP tickets at the time. I didn't have the experience that all these people did. But you know what I did see is people would who were not used to going to conventions were upset because they were coming on their lunch break and expected to walk up and get Paul Rubin's autograph on their lunch break. So they spent the money to go to a convention for a 30 minute for to wait in the line to expected to walk up and just give get Robert Inc. to get Paul Rubin's autograph. Anyone who's ever been to a convention, you know, there's going to be some waiting around. You're not just going to walk up to people like that. And then they get there and it's always the you know, Monster Mania's fault. So it's there's so money. They're so greedy there. But what they also do is give you an experience to meet these people. To begin with, people for years will complain, oh, you know, why don't you get this one? And then he gets these people, and the same people are like, oh, you got this guy, but you're letting him charge this much. Well, I mean, which is it? <laughs> Do you want them there or not? And, you know, last year, for example, who was it? Was it Robert England again? Robert England, who was a very popular character, a very popular guest at Monster Mania, which rightfully so. For anyone who's ever met Robert England, they can profess to that. Anyone who has not met Robert England, you should meet Robert England. But in general, one of the things I heard was, oh, I gotta wait in this line and that line. And I'm like, yeah, you gotta wait in the line. But once you get up there, one of the reasons is because Robert England is one of those few, you know, there are some others too, but Robert England, when you're meeting him, the reason why it's so long is because you're the only person he's there to meet at that point. And that can't be said for 700 of these people that are there. So on one hand, people complain about the prices or complaining about waiting in line to meet such and such until they meet them. And then it's, oh, okay, okay it's I all good. I could interrupt you for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, sure, no worries. I feel like I need to say this. Yes. I was a staff at that show when the yep. fire marshal was called. Right. And, um... What had happened, that was before they had the scannable wristbands. Yes. And the that also reason happened. they have the scannable wristbands now mm -hmm. is because we had paper wristbands and somebody was making copies of them and selling them in the parking lot. Yep. So it was not the Hagens That's or right. Monster Mania that oversold that show. It was somebody who was scamming and making bracelets and selling them, which is why we were so overcrowded. Right. Because the staff will know. We always, always, always hear about we can't have more people in here than the fire marshal allows. And right. they're aware of those numbers. Right. So I just needed to throw that out for anybody that might be watching this. Because that's what happened at that show. Because right. it was not only Paul Rubens. It was also Tim Curry was at that same show. Same show, I Tim Curry. Was it John Carpenter as well? John Carpenter and 700 else. other people there who were people who people always wanted to meet. And... People who are not who are not used to this kind of environment, and I got I was very defensive for the Hagens and the Monster Mania. Several times I had to step in for people being absolutely rude and belligerent to the staff, and I wasn't staff yet, so I could say whatever I wanted to people, <laughs> because I will go to bat from the Hagens or Monster Mania any day of the week. Um, one of the issues I had 
and I can't even believe this, and this is something I had to say, and again, something I have to remind people, even though it's in the name, Monster Mania Convention. I was in the tent room, and Mother was upset because someone was dressed up as a horror villain, and it was scaring their child, who was there to meet one of the It Kids. <laughs> and they were scaring... It's a horror convention. And they were giving the staff our time because, can you just, why are there so many scary costumes here? You shouldn't allow this. And I'm in line waiting for someone else. And I had, luckily I was not a staff person, so I could say whatever I want to whoever. And I said, you know, it's on your ticket, Monster Mania. Have you ever been to a convention before? <laughs> it says Monster Mania. If you went and got your tickets online, it said, you know, it's on the thing, a horror, the best horror icons of all time. What did you exactly expect to be happening here? It's clearly not a Hallmark, you know, convention and things of that nature. And these are the things I had to brought, you know, it's always nice ways of putting things. And I did, you know, bring that to their attention. It wasn't like I was rude about it, but I did call the attention. It says Monster Mini in the title. Anyone here can tell you that's a horror convention. It's on your ticket. So I can't their believe kid I have knows, their kid knows it, but yeah, is scared it, of other characters. I mean, that's exactly so my obviously, point. Obviously, that, they <laughs> they show their kids horror movies. So yeah, either the kids are not the saints that you're making them out to be, and they clearly know who these horror people. Why else are they meeting the it kids? Exactly my point, Mark. Good point. Yeah, and that was one of the reasons why I spoke up because I'm wait a minute. They're here to meet the It Kids. How do they even know them to begin with if yeah, they're not here for the horror here. convention? Yeah. I mean, some of them have done other things, but let's face it, they're here because they did It. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. And then the other thing is how rude people can be to the kids or the, you know, the, the guests when they get up there and treat the kids or the guests like you know, they're mean people because of their prices. Listen, relax there. You're meeting whoever in... It's not the end of the world. Yeah, you gonna you know coming in here you're gonna pay for something, and it's not you can't take that out on the on the kid who's there. You know that's not their fault. What their price is, that's not something they have control over. Nor is it Monster Mania's responsibility or Monster Mania's fault either, which is another misconception that happens a lot. That people automatically think, well, their prices are ridiculous because the Hagens want this, that, and the other thing. The Hagens have nothing to do with the prices of anything. The Hagen sell you the tickets so you can meet these people. After that, that's on them. Um, and that annoys me when people put claim and blame on the wrong people. And it's all about, you know, the oak on their own face because, you know, that's what it comes down to. But I just I wanted to throw education. that in. It's education as well. People, I don't think, I think that they see certain celeb like celebrities that would be at Monster Mania and they think, that they're rolling in it yeah and why would you you know why would you charge this much but they're not making tom cruise or you right. know that type of money exactly even robert england who to us we think he should be right um he's exactly. not he's right. not right you know and, and it's you know there was one panel i think it was matt lillard of you know yeah yeah i know this one yep. you're talking about. i was gonna point i was gonna point that out too mm -hmm. yep, yep exactly you know, he's like you guys are, are paying you know helping me pay my bills like but, send my kid to you know to school and in, in clothes he likes to wear you know like different things that like it's it's not what people think it is these guys work hard at the conventions think about how it he stays until what two three in the morning yeah he'll stay till everything's mad he yeah to. he's incredible um, yeah and it's not for the money that he's making it's because he doesn't want to disappoint anybody just like you were saying with robert england but they are not the the monetary caliber we may think that they are just the same absolute if not better caliber than some of the exactly overpaid, you know, technically overpaid people, but they're not really. them. And so exactly. this is really their life and they're taking breaks from their animals, their homes, you know, their mm -hmm. family. They're not yeah. at their home because they're out doing this as another source of income right. to handle between yeah. movies and to make up when movies don't do that great. You know, exactly. It's yeah. Yeah. Matthew Lillard at that, uh, that Q and a almost went through like dollar for dollar how much he didn't make in screen, which was, yeah. you know, hugely successful. But mm -hmm. I mean, he's not, 
seeing and you know right that certainly didn't make him for life it's you know exactly. he's still gotta he's still gotta make a living he's still gotta you know put put food in front of his kids and keep right. a, a roof over their house so sure. yeah let them and charge what that, they what they want and just yeah, be prepared for it you know Absolutely. they're not the movie star with a long you know cigarette, cigarette right holders and they're <laughs> dripping in diamonds and you know right what well, does he need like the money that. for right exactly yeah. i know it's that different one now exactly Really good point and exactly true. And I was going to also point out the whole Matthew Lillard thing. I'm glad you mentioned it. and Because I was at that panel too. And i got to be honest, up until that convention, and, and this is true, and I, I even told Matthew Lillard this, and, and I think he appreciated it because I'm honest and I don't candy coat things, but I'm also honest. I might not appreciate, I might not have liked a lot of his films in the past, but that panel... And what he had said about what the movie made, because I mean, I've also been in the filmmaking world too, and I also know what it's like for fans and things like that. But what he had shared in the panel spoke to me because I can understand what that is. You know, I can understand where he's coming from as a human being. So I said, listen, I might not like a lot of your films in your past. You as a human being, you are one of my favorite people on the planet because. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what made me a Matthew Lillard fan, a friend, not a fan. I may not be a fan of a lot of his old work. Him as a person and him as dedicated as he is and how normal and how real he is. That made me a Matthew Lillard fan and I appreciated Matthew Lillard a lot more than I did going in. Which is why I also encourage people when you go to these things to go to these panels so that you can hear from them directly. Yeah. And a great point, Jen. They don't make... All these millions of dollars. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Danielle Harris. Um, of course, you are. We are all from Monsumania. We know who Danielle Harris is. <laughs> Come on. But Danielle Harris in Scout Compton, I don't know if you guys know, she also has a podcast. I don't know if you guys have heard it. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. But what they talk about on what the conventions mean to them and how it, that is amazing. And I wish more people would listen to that and also, you know, listen to the things that they tell them too. Because it makes me kind of sad when I see a lot of the things that they don't like happen. But now going into that now, at least I can look out for those things now that I'm on the other side of things. And I can, you know, take that up a notch, you know. But, um, you know, listening to stories like Daniel Harris and Kane Hodder is another one of those people who talks about what the fans mean to him. Yeah. And same thing for, you know, Matthew Little and Robert England and all these other people. The reason why they're as popular as that is because they appreciate the fans. They get it. You're not going to see Tom Cruise at Monster Mania or probably half a dozen other people. You probably won't see Jamie Lee Curtis there either, all honesty. And not to, dif not to uh, you know, disappoint a lot of the horror fans out there because I know that's one of the top ten guests that Dave's been getting for years. Go get Jamie Lee Curtis. But the fact of the matter is, and from listening to, you know, Danielle Harris's podcast and just things in general, it's not to be known that she's even appreciative of her own work in the horror community. <laughs> um, so, but also she's expensive as well and things like that. And, you know, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> but you'll see everyone else there because, you know, that's what they are. So I, want, I would take Kane Hodder or um, half a dozen other people that we've had there over one Jamie Lee Curtis. And then the other part of it is when there's a Jamie Lee Curtis if she came. <laughs> yeah, I bet a lot of people <laughs> would, right? Not that I think we'd a lot say of people no would, to right? her. If, yeah, right. I'm sure if the if the, if it presented itself. But the other thing about that, is, even though I say that you probably won't see her there, even though people have been asking for years, is never say never because Dave has what Dave does I never sometimes. Thought I would meet Michael C. Hall. Yeah. And I met Michael C. Hall at Monster yeah, Me. Dave does amazing things. <laughs> yep. Fun trivia. I think I've, I've talked about this on my podcast before. I think uh, some of you guys, I think Donna knows this. I've talked about this on when I had you on. But because March is always my you know, celebratory thing and because March is always where I celebrate my birthday, every year I'll always send Dave a, my, quote, birthday wish list. And... I don't know how he does half of it, and sometimes a lot of people think, well, you know, he's just a promoter, and he doesn't care what the fans think. He doesn't want to make everyone happy. I can actually protest, and I can say that that is absolutely not true. He listens to what the fans want. He brings what people want, and 
he goes to extreme lengths to bring in the people. He knows his son, Doug, is not a horror fan. So he'll go and get people who you probably would never expect to see at Monster Mania because he wants to see that oh wow factor from Doug. And then for me for personally, <laughs> this is a fun this is a fun Dave Hagen fun story here. Way back in the day, much like uh, Donna, you talked about how he talked to you in between. I was talking to Dave about one time about during Talking Tuesday when I did on two, on Facebook back in the day. I was talking about how, as a kid, I used to have a crush on the Shining Twins when I was a kid. Don't ask why. I, I guess it's just like had girls in dark hair, I guess. But it, I'm not talking about the, you know, the dead part. But when they were alive, the Shining Twins were someone <laughs> I had a crush on and as a kid because I was a kid back then. And he remembered that conversation about the Shining Twins. And this is prior to anything else. And sure enough, that year, that March, who did he announce out of nowhere? The only thing they ever did was The Shining. And, of course, here they came. He announced The Shining Twins were making their debut in that March. Not only that, during my birthday list, I also had requested a Cujo reunion because whenever he did one similar before, I was never able to go. Or whatever the case may be, or he'd only get proud of it. Sure enough, on that same show as The Shining Twins, Dave had the Cujo reunion. <laughs> so... Whenever people want to wonder, hey, does the promoter, does Dave Hagen, do the Hagens take the request from the fans seriously? Does he take what people want? Does he just do it for himself? I can pre speak to pr from my point of view and from my perspective, and the proof is no. He gives the fans what they want. And, yeah, he might not be able to get Jamie Lee Curtis just because, just, who can? She doesn't do conventions, but he's gotten several other people. He got Pee Wee Herman. Tim Curry. T people said Tim Curry will never come to Monster Mania. He went to Monster Mania. So when it comes to the Hagens and saying you'll never meet Jamie Lee Curtis, I have to correct myself because it's Dave Hagen. He could pull magic out of nowhere. So who knows? You may. He's bringing William Shatner there. William Shatner is coming to Monster Mania for the first time. If Kevin Smith shows up, you know, Dave is going to be made to be the convention that he is meant to be. <laughs> Because <laughs> Dave pulls out all these amazing guests out of nowhere. He got the governor. I, I don't think people understand that even. Um, I call him the governor, silly rabbit that I am. But uh, David Morrissey, who was the governor in The Walking Dead, I don't think people really understand how much of a big deal it was that he was there in Monster Mania back in, um, back in Oak, Pennsylvania. Because the only convention that David Morrissey has actually showed up for to do is the Walker Stalker conventions because he was on the active roster on the, ca on the cast. Because he lives in England, <laughs> for one thing. So, in all honesty, never say never because Dave Hagen got David Morrissey to come to this convention. Um, yeah. So, when and it he comes, was great. And he, he was, was fantastic. He was wonderful. I was so yeah. blessed to finally get a chance to meet. You know, one of the other things is there's always those people when you always, I hope they'll be there. I hope they, you know, they'll be there this one, which is why I hope, you know, whenever there's people there I want to see, I, I make it a point to at least send them to say hello to them. Lloyd Kaufman's another one of those individuals who I really enjoy. You know, I don't know if you guys have met Lloyd Kaufman of Troma Films. Uncle Lloyd, there's a reason why they call him Uncle Lloyd. He feels like an Uncle Lloyd. <laughs> Um, one of the things I'm trying to get Dave to do is to do a uh, trauma, tra uh, do a super trauma reunion. Um, that would be fun. I'm trying to get him to bring uh, as many people who used to be part of trauma as possible. If there's two people particularly who I don't think a lot of people know was part of trauma back in the day, but they do do conventions, and I'm trying to get Dave to get them to come along with Lloyd. And for Lloyd, they'll show up. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, that's our friends over from South Park, Colorado, <laughs> uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone. Could you imagine Trey Parker, Matt Stone at, your, at any of the Monster Manias? And you can't I ran say, into him at the Philly con uh, Tattoo Convention. I ran Lloyd? Into Lloyd. Yeah. Lloyd's yeah. a fantastic guy. And um, we recognized each other from Monster Mania, yep. and I ended up spending most of the day at the trauma table um, with them just hanging out and having a – brilliant time and it was like just wonderful and he actually is the one who discovered Catherine Cochran mm -hmm. um, and he's very proud of her and he's 
he's proud of everybody that's in the movies and yeah. he's very, you know he's such a great guy and he's you know safety first and um mm -hmm. i think that you know i always love that lloyd or even just the toxy table is there you know it's yeah. just it's a, it's a definite bonus to any convention that we have is to have them there i absolutely agree with that um lloyd is always a spot on individual love lloyd and for that, he's a, such a real guy, and he's also respectful of the people who helped along the way. And he remembers them all, and he remembers all of us individual. He'll recognize people. He'll say, "If you haven't seen you in so long," he'll say, "Where have you been?" Same thing. Some other people say the same thing <laughs> if they go to him enough. But Lloyd's one of those people who will very much do that. And one of the cool parts is that you know a lot of the people who worked for him are also respectful of Lloyd Kaufman they don't look down upon trauma films like people outside of our genre will they'll look at a trauma film people who aren't into the horror community and say oh how can you watch this well it's entertaining that's why <laughs> and it's completely outlandish and it's co completely ridiculous and completely entertaining and fun why do you watch that sappy love story you've seen 700 of the same time you know, I show, you know, I say different strokes for different folks. If you like horror, you like horror. If you like comedy, you like comedy. Monster Mania is a horror convention per se. But like I said, like when we talk about Anthony Michael Hall, who is part of Monster Mania. Um, what's his name? Uh, ha the guy is from Rocky, Apollo Cruz, Not Apollo Cruz. Apollo Creed was there. Um, I don't know why I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Earl yeah, him. Well, Kyle, well, he was yeah. also in Terminator, so we have yeah. to give him the Terminator. Lloyd, you got Dolph Lundgren who was part of there, and we know he was there for Doug. <laughs> and they have well, a dozen other people. The Dexter cast, what well, they were, yeah. I mean, Dexter cast sure. and the, was really, and I mean, Cobra, other than I mean, the Jennifer Cobra Carpenter Kai guys, yeah, multiple. Cobra Kai, yeah, but Cobra Kai, absolutely, yes, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> 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 well, outside, I would probably like the chance of me ever seeing him would be absolutely nil. Yeah. But I grew up yeah. loving the right. karate kid. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was like, wait, who's here? Like, who's <laughs> there? That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> just couldn't believe, couldn't, uh, there's always one, at least one wow person that you're like, oh, how did Dave pull that one off? I mean, at least, <laughs> you know, at least one. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes you know, sometimes more, sometimes you know, four well, or five. Sometimes you don't like, even know what to wow, do because there's so amazing. many. Well, how about this show we have coming yeah. up in March? Oh my gosh, I don't Jax know Teller is coming to Monster Mania, and for years I told my cousin, I said, you know, he's going to be at Monster Mania at some point. Dave's going to bring him in. He's like, he's not going to be there. He doesn't do horror conventions. Of course, I'm talking about what's his name, the guy from you know, Jax Teller, um, Charlie Tunham. Is that his name? What's his? Hoon. Hoonan. Yeah, him. Whatever. Is he's going to be there. Yeah. Of all people. And then what's funny the is my wife. Yeah, my know. wife just said that. What's funny is my wife said, well, if he ever gets, he's not going to bring the Undertaker there. He's too expensive. You'll never see the Undertaker there. I said, watch, Dave will announce some point. The Undertaker will be there. Sure enough, within 48 hours of that conversation, the Undertaker is coming to Monster Mania. So never say never when it comes to people you want to meet and you ever you think that Dave can't pull something off, don't. Put, don't put your eggs in one basket to people out there who thinks that Dave can't pull off his superpowers. I will say one thing, another tip for yep. newbies sure. would be if you absolutely positively want to see somebody, I'm going to say see somebody, mm -hmm. get the photo op. Mm. Because, yes, it's quick. You don't, you don't get to, like, interact and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But look who's here. Right. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it is worth it because it would probably be more devastating to leave never even getting close to some mm -hmm. um, or close as you want. Right. And especially like, I mean, Charlie's has sold out. I, I don't even know how many yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F um, <laughs> of the photo ops. Uh, Cause I think a lot of people are, are realizing that and they're getting those photo ops and there's, you can have, we're fortunate because we are able to have up to four other people. Mm -hmm. um, some conventions, it's two people. Mm -hmm. So if you can find three other people to get yeah. in that picture with sure. you, then you've got a lot of great pictures at mm -hmm. a very reasonable price. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great way just to say, yes, I'm definitely going to have my picture taken with this person. 
And if the person should cancel, they're super good on quickly re and you know refunding the entire purchase. So right, and that's important. That's good to know, and that's a great tip too. Um, a few years ago, I was waiting on my tax return when I was a staff person. When I, before I was a staff person, I was waiting on my tax return, which usually came in like that every year. Of course, this one year, it didn't come in when it came for time for Monster Mania. So, fortunately for me, my wife, you know, my wife is awesome anyway, anyway but anyway, my wife um, had got me um, in a photo op with Meatloaf, who was my hero growing up. And he was always going to be my hero. Uh, for not, not a lot of people don't you know know a lot of his backstory. I'm very familiar with his backstory because I share a lot of that backstory with him. But because I didn't have the funds to go meet Meatloaf at that point or just go up and talk to him or whatever else, she did get me the photo op with him, which I was very grateful for uh, because I got to at least say I got to photo with my hero, my role model growing up, the person who got me through some of the hardest problems of my life. And Meatloaf broke the rules, by the way. He did talk to me a little bit, but that's okay. After me, they, they made sure that didn't happen, though. Sorry for everyone. I probably ruined that for everyone else, but I'm very Tim grateful Curry for that. Tim Curry was like that with me. He kept talking, and the photographers were saying, we need to take your picture, and he kept talking. I was like, all right. My wife had the same experience with Tim Curry. She met him as well. And it was my wife, my kids, and everyone else got a picture with Tim Curry. I did not get to meet Tim Curry. Um, but the other awkward one, which was also fun, was... A lot of people know I write a lot of sh I write a lot of short stories. So the ongoing joke in our house is that Christina Ricci is my um, ex-wife because <laughs> uh, I used to write a lot of short stories in high school. So a lot of the t stuff was you know my character was married to Christina Ricci. So ongoing joke is Christina Ricci is my wife. So now I'm with my actual wife, who got me a photo op with Christina Ricci, who's also in the picture with us. I know it wouldn't mean a lot to anybody else, but the fact that I had a picture with my actual wife and my, you know, fictitious wife at the same time was quite an interesting thing. So <laughs> these are the only experience you can have at a monster mania like that. So that's kind of one of the reasons I share that because I'm going to butt in because I have to get going. Yes. But I want to tell one more story like that. And I'm Absolutely. sorry for being rude and butting in. No but I was talking to Kane Hodder. Yes. And my, my, I was not on duty. Uh -huh. I was off duty and I was talking to him and my phone rang and it was my husband <laughs> and Kane said, and I said, Oh, it's my husband. And Kane said, let me answer it. <laughs> so Kane got on the phone and said, hello. And my husband said, hello, <laughs> who is this? And he said, this is Kane Hodder. And it was just hilarious. <laughs> it was so silent from the other end for a moment. You know? and then, then I heard him laughing. So right. I just had to throw that in, but I love you guys. That's awesome. I, I have to go. No worries. It was weeks. great seeing you, Linda. Donna, have a great one. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Excellent. Thank you, Donna. Safe travels. See, see you, Donna. Shortly. And then there were going to be three. Yes, and I'm going to unfortunately have to bow out soon, too. Oh, but, uh, all I right. I'm so sorry. But, That's uh, okay. Hey, it was great to have you, though. It was always good yes. to see you, and thanks for well, coming. And I will tell you, it's funny. We had, um, we've had two, like just awesome experiences with our youngest. Um, and there was like, you know, in the midst, sometimes they wander away and I'm not sure how old he was at this time. He might've been, I mean, he's almost 14 now. So he might've been like eight, <laughs> nine years old. And we're just like, where, where did he go? He is over just chatting with Kane. Sounds they're right. having the best conversation they're just you know <laughs> and it was like the cutest thing ever and then there was another one when rick flair was there wow the nature boy. and rick flair had him come over <laughs> and he called his daughter mm -hmm. and on a video call and oh, had man. um cohen on the call and stuff i mean it's just those are those moments that are like so priceless yeah, that you know you can you can have those experiences um which i think are, are very special and i wasn't staff during either one of those events right like exactly. i was not yet on the staff roster so it was just me and my family there um being you know treated amazingly by every you know everybody so Awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only one who brings my kids to the horror convention. Thank you oh, for, for bringing that up. Because a lot of people think that, you know, it's a horror convention. So why, am I going to be able to bring my kids? Yeah, you can bring your kids. I think I think you should know your kids enough to know what they can handle yep. and what they can't. 
Absolutely. Um, these parents who are yeah. upset about their yep. kids going to see the it kids, but are afraid of everything else. It sounds more of a parent problem than the kids. The kids probably didn't have a problem meaning the it kids. But I'm glad that I'm not the only one and whatnot. So my son will be there, but Chris, my son started coming there when he was 11. Now he's 20. So, yeah, by the way, my son did say thank you to everyone who signed his makeshift birthday oh, yes, card. Yes. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, he will be there. He'll be there in March. So make sure when you see him, you go up to him and give him and make sure he, you know, you say, I signed your card. So he can I say thank you. I absolutely will. I look forward to <laughs> it. He is my mini me. So you can't That's miss great. him. I will. We'll be there on Thursday you. as always. So. We'll be there. Very cool. But All right. It's great to have you. Thank you very yes. much, Jen. It and was we will so good see to you see in a couple you. Weeks. I've missed faces, so it's good to see you guys. And Absolutely. I, I look forward to seeing you guys both soon. Yes. Safe travels. See you, Jen. You too. Take care, yes. guys. Yes. Yes, indeed. Safe travels. Bye. Well, Mark, <laughs> then there was two. And then there were two. And then there'll be more probably coming. Who knows when? They'll be coming in eventually. People, You know how people Yeah, are well, that's pretty cool. Where'd you go? Oh, oh yeah, you're right there. You're yep. right there. I'm a little guy yep. in the corner. Okay, cool. Hold on. I can do all you do this. I got all these. Oh, look at that. I fixed it. Cool. Anyway, so Mark. Yeah, it's so any... great to hear. Uh, so, do like, have... great, just the great stories about, uh, you know, stars meeting, you know, being so, so nice to, you know, the guests. And, and I know, do you have I think it was stories, Jen Mark? mentioned Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Do you have any of those yeah, stories? Yeah, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, um, Anthony Michael Hall was uh, very sweet to, to my whole family and uh, incredibly sweet to my daughter. She's 13, and we had shown her, uh, you know, his old 80s movies as well as <laughs> as the Halloween movie. So, you know, but just uh, and he was incredibly sweet to me, too, and, and I went back to see him later Um and, and just, I mean, it was almost tears in my eyes when I was talking about, you know, his interaction with her and how great it was to, you know, how sweet he was to her. And it was just, it was just great. It was just, uh, just great. So That's awesome. Well, I got a couple um, that I don't know if I've told you before, but I guess I'll tell it now and I'll tell it again on the show as I always do. By the way, I don't know if you can see this uh, collage thing behind, well, my background here, but you're in here over here in the corner, in case you didn't know. But yeah, you're in this this photo. Am I down? Oh, I was. You're down here in the corner somewhere, but I can't. Okay. Yeah, move out of the way. But you know, you're here. So it's Doug, Dave <laughs> over here, and Doug's over here, and yeah. I see Actually, a lot. You're of, also, yeah, I see a lot of wait, wait, wait. Faces. I can do this. Hold on. You're in here somewhere. If you have really good hawk eyes, you can find yourself here. But you're there too. Oh, there you are, right here, where my hand is. You're right there. See it? Right there. All right. You're right next to, in between Tyler Maine and one of other staff people. So that's kind of cool. But a couple of oh, stories, I don't know if you've it's heard. It's a good company to be in. Yeah, right? Tyler Maine, a Hall of Famer on our show. But anyway, <laughs> so a couple of stories for people who have not heard the story before. But two that really speak out to me was one of the biggest things was Danielle Harris. Uh, my first time really getting to know Danielle Harris or meeting Danielle Harris. Um, and at Monster Mania. And it was one of those rare things. Because Danielle Harris generally doesn't, you know, go out and about. Um, the, you know, she usually kind of sticks to herself. Doesn't go to the bars a lot. This particular time, she happened to come down to the bar. And I don't drink, um, as uh, as I get a lot of heat for. Um, but I do drink Pepsi. That's my idea of hardcore drinking right there. Uh, so I was drinking a Pepsi at the bar when it, many, many, many years ago. And I was talking to Danielle Harris. I was just, you know, Danielle Harris walked in, sat on the bench thing, and I'm just talking to her about various things. She knew that I wrestled. Maybe I think she knew that I wrestled. I don't know. We just started talking like you normally do with these things because what else are you going to do? Danielle Harris walked in, and I just talked to anyone like there are anyway. And we had this conversation about relationships. At the point, at that time, my wife and I, um, we weren't, you know, we were thinking about getting back together. We weren't together yet. Sometimes one of the biggest things about our relationship is I like to say is sometimes you got to go around the world to find the person you're supposed to be with is in front of you the whole time. So that's kind of the story of my wife and I. Yeah. yeah. You know, we met many years ago and two kids later. And then finally, years later, we decided to make an official thing. So, but Danielle Harris, fun story about this is I was sitting in the, you know, the Cherry Hill bar there having my Pepsi, talking to her about, 
at that time, this is when Facebook was a thing. And I, even though I was wrestling and I was busy at the time anyway, I would see all these people I went to school with with all these relationship things going on. And, you know, granted, I wasn't sure where my relationship was going with my wife yet. Well, it wasn't my wife yet, but, you know, I wasn't sure where that was going to go or whatever. And Danielle Harris said to me that, listen, you know, because at that point I knew a bunch of jerks who I knew who were getting married and getting engaged. I said, maybe i got to be a, a jerk. Maybe I have to be a bad guy because I don't know if good guys are out there anymore. <laughs> and you know, I don't think girls like the kind of the guy who just wants to have one girl, one guy, and wants to have a family because girls don't like that, I guess. She said, you know what? Keep going to these shows because I bet you anything that as many times as you go to these shows, sometime, you're going to meet the woman you're going to spend the rest of your life at the, one of these shows. Keep coming. And I kid you not, three months later, three months later at a wrestling convention, because that's what I come from, that's what I do, I would meet the woman who, you know, I would re-meet my, re my wife again, and sure enough, you know, fast forward, we're now married, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Danielle Harris called that three months prior. She uh -huh. said I was going to meet my wife at a, one of these conventions. Three months later, I would meet my, I would, you know, re see my wife, and sparks would fly again, and the rest nice. is history. And it was actually at Monster Mania that August. This is, how, this is how interesting it is, and this is how important Monster Mania is. Um, I had told Dave, you know, Dave knew that I was, you know, really into the, my whole life thing. My, this was my son's first time coming to Monster Mania was at this time time as well. He was 11 at the time, or 10. He was a 10 at the time when he came to him for his first Monster Mania. And <laughs> we were in Cherry Hill, and I just said, you know what? I told Dave that I was going to propose to, I was going to be a guest on my wife's podcast. Cause at that time she had her own wrestling podcast and I had told her I had a surprise that I wanted to, you know, to unveil a big announcement I was going to have on the show. And only very few people knew what that announcement was. The only person who really knew was Dave and the Monster Mania crew who had Dave and Doug and at that point Rob Dimension. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, he used to be no. heavy involved with Monster Mania. Um, I think he got bad with, he got really heavy into, got really bad in COVID. He got COVID really bad oh. against Robert Dimension. Hope he's doing okay. But he used to be heavy at Monster Mania. He was almost all of them. He and Dave had a podcast together and everything else. Rob Dimension is an awesome guy. But I, they were the ones who kind of knew that I was going to propose to my wife on the air of her own show, which was going to break <laughs> the history. Because I would be the first person to propose to his wife on the air. Because it was a live show. Very nice. Sure enough, in my hotel room in, in Cherry Hill, upstairs, and then Dave, because he knew it was going to happen, and because the, the, the hotel runs on internet kind of radio kind of a thing, Dave had them pipe in the podcast so everyone could hear the proposal on the loudspeakers at Monster Mania. Oh. So that was kind of awesome. That's so, nice. Everyone got to hear the proposal, and everyone was really, you know, congratulated or whatever. But the other funny story comes from that same time. It was my son's first time going to Monster Mania. And I think I did tell you this story, I think, back, in, back then, um, back in November, I might have told you this. But my son was, again, he was young then, but he's not per se a horror fan fan. My son's the guy who goes to the conventions for all the knickknacks and the collection stuff. He likes all that stuff. He likes the merch and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Not really huge into the horror people. He doesn't really like meeting a lot of the horror guests or anything like that, per se. Unless it's someone really over the top, he'll meet them. But he's not really into going up and meeting people on random. But <laughs> this particular time, he was young anyway. So we're in the restaurant, you know, the same restaurant in uh, Cherry Hill, in that restaurant there, and wasn't as expensive. And as we were sitting there at dinner, he and I, um, we had a table for four, but it was only the two of us at that time. It was a sold-out Friday night. You know how crazy that restaurant gets. Huh? Crowded. Yep. Exactly. Well Robert, well, Robert England and his wife comes in, and, you know, he offered people $100 for their table. But, you know, because everyone else was there, even though it was Robert England, no one wanted to give them their table. It was Friday night. Everyone was hungry. But my son said, you know, if the guy wants, this is his words, if the guy wants to sit, we have two seats over there, ask him if his wife wants to sit with us. Because my son, much like me, if we have the option to help someone, we will. Didn't yes. know who, he didn't know who Robert England was to sit from a hole in the wall. Had no idea who Robert England was. And he even told Robert England to him his face, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> I've never seen anything you've done. Have you ever done anime? <laughs> 
<laughs> but needless to say, um, so needless to say, my son and I, my son had dinner with Robert England, not knowing who Robert England was. But at that particular time, he did know who Adam West was, who was Batman. Right, right. And when we talk about how rare these conventions are and how impressive they are, in the restaurant that particular time, we had one booth had six tix, tix leather six leather faces, another one had Adam West and Burt Ward and the other and the other um, booth, and then you had Kane Hodder over here, Lou Ferrigno over there, and then Rob, Robert England his wife walks in. So imagine <laughs> being in this restaurant surrounded by all my these people. My gosh, my yeah. son had no idea. He knew who Adam West was. He didn't know who Leatherfaces are, and he didn't know who Robert England was, even though he had dinner with him. So now, fast forward <laughs> all these years later, the ongoing joke between Robert England is he'll he'll talk, ask me how his son who does if his son has actually seen anything of his yet, <laughs> and I'll usually tell him I'm trying. Uh, I can't say he has yet, but he. We've built him for our show. I said, we did agree to put you in our Hall of Fame, which we did. He and Kate, Tyler Maine and Kane Hodder was, are in our Wrestling Hall of Fame, of all places. Wow. Because um, they were one of our cool. first people we added. So, which actually, Wes Craven and um, Robert Lingman helped us name our males and our female roster. Uh, when I met Wes Craven and Robert England together, it was before you know my son was there. They had suggested we call our, you know, we call them the Dream Masters, uh, you know, because we were all about making our dreams come true. The whole, I mean, and it was a film by Wes Craven. Mm-hmm. And then we had the thing with the women. We used to call our women roster the Women Warriors Wrestling, WOW. But there's another company that has WOW. And we didn't want to have any problems there or whatever. And we wanted to stand out. So Robert England had suggested after Wes Craven had died, because they were tickled pink that we had. A wrestling show we had them as wrestlers because they thought that was hysterical <laughs> oh that he, and then he had to team up with kane hodder and tyler Maine and all these other things so anyway because again robert was one of those rare people mm-hmm. but the um but you know they he said robert england has suggested we call our women dream warriors since we call our males the dream masters and you know, going on that, I said, "Hey, well, Robert England and Wes Craven are okay with it. I guess we don't have any issues there. They're the <laughs> ones who named their own movie, so why not? <laughs> if only I can get the approval of Dawkins to use that as a theme, that would be great. But unfortunately, <laughs> not happening anytime soon. But those yeah. are the the two funniest stories that I have about Monster Mania. Is those things stand out? But also that lesson about, you know, learning, for teaching, getting to know people for ourselves and finding out for ourselves how someone is rather than take someone by what someone else says. Because right. people have a hard time. People have a bad day. Right. You know, and yep. you don't know what happened at the end of the At the end of the day, you don't know what happens with someone else, what, what kind of a day someone's had. Exactly. Being from pro wrestling, I can understand that because a lot of people... One of my favorite stories about that is um, a guy named Bruce Pritchard, Brother Love from the 80s. He was a wrestling guy. He's one of the creators on the creative team now, now years later. But he tells a great story about how he was going to a, he was going through an airport in a rush because his wife was di- was in the hospital with cancer. Hmm. And she was not doing well. And she was going for surgery. And Bruce Pritchard was told by the hospital he needed to get here ASAP. It was an issue. So he's rushing through the airport and these fans were stopping him for pictures and autographs and so forth while he's trying to yeah. get to the pair. And yeah, he actually stopped for some of them, but they wanted this pose and that pose and all these other things. And he's listening. I got to get to the, I got to go. I got to get to the whole thing. Those people who he didn't take pictures with and autographs to, cause he rushed to get to his wife. They went ahead and went on to all of their little bulletin boards and told everyone, Oh, he's mean. He doesn't like his fans. He's a jerk yeah. to people. Yeah. And that wasn't the case at all. He was he's very respectful of fans when, you know, they're for that. But mm-hmm. here's a guy whose wife is hurt, is in the hospital, serious situation, but because at the end of the day, the fans don't know what goes on in people's lives. They think that nothing happens exactly. to these people. Yep. So, you know, that's one of the things I usually like to point out to people. These are real life people. These are yep. humans. It doesn't yep. matter what their job is, they're still humans. Yeah. And you need to treat them as such. And that was something you I, I noticed you said before when you uh, when you approached John Hurd was that you yeah. approached him with respect. Yeah. And so that's, if we just treat everybody with respect, we, you know, 
exactly. usually respect will be returned. So that's exactly true. And that's the golden 100%. rule, you, you know, you treat people the way they treat you and the way you want to be treated. And, you know, exactly. And then, yeah, and, and I, I've never had a problem meeting someone. I don't know how many people you've met over the years, but I'm sure you've met a good amount of people. And I'm sure you've not. I mean, how many people have you had a bad experiences with? Has there been any? Uh, as far of. as as far as Monster Mania, no. I mean, and as far as you know, just in my regular my regular life. But but then again, like like you said, you treat people with respect, yeah, and that was something that same. I've always learned exactly. as a kid. You, exactly. You know, you got to be respectful of your you know, and like you said, you know, the the guy going through the airport to get to his sick wife. You don't yeah. know that. You yeah. you know, right. and and you should start out with something like that. Do you have a minute? You know, right. do you have a minute to take a picture with me? And if it's not, then leave it at that. There's you, probably you know, a reason. You just got to deal it. with it. Yeah, and, there's probably a reason for it without having to think that they're just mean, evil, and they don't like you. Because that's yeah. what they'll say. Yeah. But absolutely, yeah. that's true. Treat everyone the same respect as you want to be treated, and treat everyone the same. Because that's how I always approach it. Yep. But also, I think it's important to also listen to your instincts too. Because, like I said, I've only had one not so great moment. And I, I could have avoided that whole thing if I listened to my instincts and walked away or not even put myself in the situation to begin with because that was also an option. I, I didn't have to put myself in the situation. I went by what someone had suggested to me, even though if it wasn't something I wanted to do. I always trust your instincts mm -hmm. as far as that goes. When yeah. I talk about, you know, sticking to that budget, make your list of who you want to meet and try not to go outside of that, you know, realm, you yeah. won't be as bad, you know? Yeah. The year that I had that issue, um, I had some a certain amount of people on the list. The person I had the issue with was not anywhere on that radar. Well, it was never me saying, oh, I definitely want to get him. Mm -hmm. Or even if I have extra, I'm going to go meet him. His, this was a fact that, you know, I listened to someone who was with me. Well, you got his dad. You got to get him too, because you know how often you're going to get both of them. Well, it turns out I don't really didn't really need him at all, and I don't know anybody who just wanted to meet him. In fact, I just walked up to him. But his dad is actually someone who people knew, and now his dad's not going to be there anytime soon either, because he has his own issues. Hmm. And, and it's funny how that turns around all these years later. <laughs> but you know, you can't take everything to count then i've talked to people who haven't had that experience with that particular guest so mm. you can't you know you don't know what's going on with people but you can't yeah. hold it and it's not monster mania's fault that that happened or anybody else's that's on them and whatever yeah you know and yeah i've actually met more rude get uh you know people fans. attending than yeah. guests i mean i've never had an issue with you know a with a guest right but, you know, the people who show up and, you know, they they don't want to wait in the line and they don't want to, you know, <laughs> you know, go to a bathroom that's over there and not the one that's reserved for the, you know, for the stars right, and or you something know, else and right. that kind of thing. So, yeah. Right. So or the, the people that, you know, at, at the last Cherry Hill show, I was working on a Sunday and it was three thirty mm -hmm. on a Sunday. Vendors are starting to leave some of the guests, you know, you know, crowds are thinning out. Sure. And and they show up to get their ticket at three thirty on a Sunday, <laughs> and it's in there, and they're like, "Well, where's?" It? So I'm like, "It's three thirty on a Sunday. This right. thing ends at like, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever, right. you know, whatever yeah. time it was. Right. You're not going to spend an hour and a half and get everybody that you wanted to get. So that, that just, goes, just the exactly." That's that common sense thing that I talked about earlier about the woman yeah. who was all upset because she thought that she was literally going to go on her lunch break to go walk up to someone and just get their autograph. That's not how that works. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that, that's not how that works for any convention. You just, you know, have to go in and walk to the person and expect everything to be done. That's not how that works. Yep. Um, you need to map out what you want to do and be prepared to wait. Oh, that's the best way to end. The other part of it is, oh, yeah, you got to wait. But get that moment. You get, yes. you get your moment eventually, yep. don't you? Yep. And then once you get it, then you're like, oh, well, then it was all worth it until you're, you know, complaining and whining about it. Yeah. There's nothing that annoys me more than people who, you know, will talk poorly about someone. And then when they get what they want, then they're like, oh, well, you know, it was good. Or they know I mean well. I said, you know, you can't trash the convention <laughs> 
or the Hagens yeah. and then tell me after the fact how this was a great moment or because let's face it, the fact of the matter is you're meeting this person because the guy you're making fun of or the one that you're insulting yeah. is the one who made it possible for you he to brought meet him them. there. Yeah. For yeah. your benefit, not his. And that drives me very, that very much annoys me when people think that that's like the end goal and that's what they're all in for. Right. Because that's not it at all. Because I, I honestly don't know how that aspect is and I don't really want to know. Because that's not, you know, that's not something that's important to me. But my job is to make sure everyone has fun, that is safe, and everyone is, you know, doing what they're supposed to do and having a good time. That's ultimately right. what it's about. Yep. In a safe and, man and mindful manner. Yep. And and if everybody does that, it's an incredible amount of fun. I mean, sure. it's just, it's an incredible experience. If right. everybody just, you know, follows the rules and gets along and, you yeah. know, we're, we're all sure. there because we love Being monster there. movies and right. let's just unite in that and forget right. about, you know. Sure. All I the mean, petty stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you're waiting in line, make loose of it. Talk, shoot on a conversation with whoever you're waiting with. Not not about yeah. how horrible the time is, but you can have a conversation about, oh, yeah. my favorite movie is this, that, and the other thing. And before you know it, look, you got to go up in front of the person because you it's can there. have that appointment. Yep. Because yep. this is one of those places you can have that conversation about the reanimator, and it's completely acceptable because everyone gets it. Yep. You talk about the reanimator at any other place, at Walmart, stop and shop, <laughs> the office. Imagine yeah. going to a, you know, one of those office jobs where you got to do taxes or whatever, and then someone wants to sit there and have a conversation about the reanimator yeah. or the, <laughs> the human centipede. But, you yeah. know, that's the kind of the rare thing. So instead yeah. of complaining about, oh, I got to wait in line for meeting such and such, take the most of that time. And yep. meet new people. That's how yeah. we all got to know each other. Because we yep. were always at these shows. And yep. we don't, you know, that's how things start. Yep. And uh, Yeah, I was, I, was, uh, I was at an Oak show uh, a couple years ago. And I hadn't been picked to volunteer. So I just went as, as a guest. And I was standing in, uh, in line for Warrington Gillette. And uh, he hadn't shown up yet. And he was, you know, everybody else was coming. But he wasn't there yet, and, you know, people were starting to get a little antsy. And, you know, I was second in line, and the guy who was standing in front of me, you know, had this, um, like, little tube. And so I just, you know, struck up a conversation with him. Hey, what's in yeah. the tube? You know, what do you got for him to sign? Yeah. You know, and since he was there for Warrington, Warrington Gillette, I knew he was a Friday the 13th fan, which is right. my, you know, that's my franchise. And, right. I mean, he was incredibly late, but... <laughs> the two of us just had the you know a yeah. really good conversation and then we were happy when he finally got there and you know so instead of seeing people who were miserable about having to you know to wait for him they you know see smiling faces because we had such a good conversation so and, that, and that's awesome and that's what's important you know at the end of the day that's kind of what it's all about is celebrating those moments with the things that we really like so you must be thrilled about the uh fr the final girls of friday the 13th huh? yes Being a friday very the 13th much so guy? yep cool yep. nice yep. see i, I uh, i'm a firm believer in everyone at monster Mania belongs because everyone doesn't matter if you're a freddy jason I like all of them equally. I think they're all twisted in their own ways, but that's why we like these people because they're twisted in their own ways. Yep. Um, but, you know, so I always have a ball talking to people and it doesn't bother me any or whatever else. And I think that if more people approach it like, you know, the open-minded and fun light atmosphere instead of looking at, oh, how much is this going to be or how long do I got to wait? Yep. Listen, just, you know, breathe it in, drink it in, just like, enjoy the moment. Because you're yep. not going to have another moment like that the rest of your life. You're not exactly. going to have, maybe you're not going to get to meet Warrington Gillette ever again. That's the reality of that. And yeah. if I had not met John Hurd or George A. Romero when I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. How, what yep. would happen, you know? And I'm yep. grateful that I did, you know? And the same thing goes for a lot of other people that have come and gone. And. Oh, what was the other one? Um, Scott Wilson. Scott Wilson of The Walking Dead. Oh, one right. Of the one of the most popular people at Monster Mania. People, when The Walking Dead was a popular thing, 
they knew it. And Scott Wilson and um, Lou Temple, Lou Temple was another one of those people. A lot of people outside of the horror genre probably didn't know who they were. People at Monster Mania, they knew who, all about them. Mm-hmm. But you know, Scott Wilson's buying people drinks in the bar. You know, that's the kinds of things that happen at these shows. Yeah. And one yep. of my favorite when we talk about those rare moments, the year John um, John Carpenter was there was you know I think the year that everyone was there, and I wasn't on staff yet, so I was still a fan kind of thing. I'm down the lobby because let's face it, when I go to the show, I'm very rarely in my room, regardless. Whether I'm working or I'm a guest, I still am never in my room, very rarely. Because I like to be amongst the people and along the chaos, I guess you'd say. Yep. There's always something to do with the Monster Mania anyway. There's movies, there's panels, there's something. Yep. As I'm sitting in the lobby on Thursday night, making out my list, this little old guy in a ponytail walks up to me. And I'm sitting on this bench that was right next to where the, chair, where the elevators are. And the guy comes over and I'm talking to him. Just like we do at Monster Mania, you know, someone looks familiar, but they, you know, I, I figured I've been to Monster Mania many times. I've probably seen him in multiple times. He's probably some fan I've seen many times before. A little old guy. He's got a ponytail, and I'm talking to him about, you know, he was talking about Monster Mania and the horror community, the horror fans. And I said, oh, yeah, it's a good place like that. We're talking like normally, like we are right now. And then David Hagen Jr. walked over to him. As I call him, David Hagen, probably not a junior, but David <laughs> Hagen Jr., as I call him, walks over to him and goes, okay, Mr. Carpenter, your room's ready. <laughs> and oh, I, my gosh. I talked to John Carpenter for 45 minutes, uninterrupted, just a regular conversation for 45 minutes in the lobby that weekend. Isn't and I that never, incredible? And I never saw him the rest of the weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't wait in the line. I didn't get his autograph. Didn't get a picture yeah. of him. But these are the things that happen, you know. Just, Amazing. Yeah, you know, drink that in instead of, oh, no, you know. There's yep. always something fun. Yep. The Chandler Riggs thing I talked about with John Hurd. There's a thing about that waiting in line thing, too. Chandler Riggs, of all people, he's a young kid, you figure. He's, you know, sometimes, in, for me personally, I always look at things after the fact. I catch on to things late. Sometimes I don't, I'm not aware of, the kind of overall thing until a little bit after the fact. Or I don't think is anything is as epic as it really is. So this is one of those examples. After meeting John Hurd and talking to him and all that, which was awesome, because, you know, Dave Hagen's are good friends with Chandler Riggs' dad and stuff like that. And at this point, Chandler Riggs has been there a few times. I say, you know what? I want to go hang out with this line. I want to go say hi to Chandler Riggs. What am I else am I going to do? Why not wait in line? What else am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything else, so I'm waiting in line for Chandler Riggs. In that long line I mentioned and I described, and you know the area, so you know exactly how long that is. Exactly. You, know, you could also up the ramp. Yeah. And you also know how long of a line that was, because remember he had a lunch, a photo op, and a couple other things in between that while I was waiting. Yeah. But sure enough, you know, I got to the front of the line. Again, I don't think much of it. So I'm talking to his dad. His dad does music. I don't know if you knew that, Chandler Riggs' dad. Uh, Randy Riggs, he has his own um, record, he has his own band and stuff. So I was talking about music. Mm. I asked Chandler, I said, you know, Chandler, it's great to see you guys here. Again. It's always good to have you guys here and helping out Dave and stuff like that. Um, he said, oh, yeah, thanks. And he was, so I gave him, a, I, I make photo collages for everyone because they little, you know, something extra. So I have him do that. And I also give him a little copy of it for themselves as well. So some, because what am I, I, I come from the wrestling world, so we don't, just get autographs or get autographs from other people. You've got to give them something too. So that's usually what I do. So I nice. gave him one. I got my own. But as he was signing it, I didn't think about it until after the fact. Talking to his dad and I talked to Chandler. I said, you know, it's great to see you again. You're getting big, man. Whatever. Just like normally anybody else. He asked me about my son and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And we took our picture. And I didn't realize that he had already signed my name on the autograph. It, while I was talking to him. Oh, wow. This was my third time meeting Chandler, my third time talking to Chandler Riggs. And I didn't think anything much of that. Now, in retrospect, he just, I just waited in line quite a bit. He met all of these people prior to me. And he, all the people all over the place, all these other shows that he does. Chandler Riggs knew who I was. <laughs> Isn't that something? Jeez. And, and I had to have my friends point that out to me. So, like, yeah. Incredible. But you realize that 
he, out of all the people he knows, he knew who you were. He wrote your two jazz thing. Isn't How many something? people out there know who you are? Look at all the people he knows and he knew who you were. Wow. But that's it, a great story. Yeah. So, needless to say, those are those moments you can only have at a Monster Mania. Mark, you know, you've been a good yeah. trooper here, last of the Mohicans, I guess. And I know there was a lot of other people who wanted to be here, but the timing and stuff like that. Um, I know Donna Donna Jean has um, multiple other things she's going to do and so forth. But I want to thank you for being here. Your first time. Did you have fun? Absolutely. This was fun. Yeah, this is the uh, oh, absolutely. First, this is oh, the new, it was a great time. This is our new platform. This is our new way of doing things. So hopefully, it worked out well for you. It was nice to have you on, and we hope you have you on again yeah. at some point. Maybe we'll have like a, a Monster Mania recap after Monster Mania in March. Um, to kind of go over everything. Hey, yep, yeah, I'll be there. Awesome. Well, Mark, Sounds it was a great good. time having And as I said to you before, always be you. doesn't matter because you're fun regardless. You're already an awesome dude. I, I enjoy talking to you, so you don't have to try <laughs> to be entertaining or try to be fun because you already are. You're one of us. So accept it and drink it in, man. You're good. All right? Cool stuff, brother. Thank well, you, Jazz. I really, I, this was fun. I really like this. Mark, it was great to have you on. I want to thank everyone else as well. Mark, you have a great night, and I will let you go amongst your Friday so you can watch your Friday the 13th. This is Friday, by the way. It's not the 13th, though. Guess Sounds good. good. Oh, yeah. All right, Mark. Have a great <laughs> night, brother. Be safe. All right. Thanks, Jazz. Thank Bye-bye. you. Peace, brother. And then there was me. Everyone, I want to thank everyone who was part of tonight. And I know there were a lot of other people who wanted to be here. And I did try to get the Hagens and other people to be on. But, you know, you got to understand, um, Dave is running Monster Mania. Um, and he is putting together probably one of the best shows that people are going to be enjoying. And, you know, his other people who also are into that genre, everyone has so many other things they're doing. And... You know, I want to thank everyone who was part of tonight, and I want to thank the Hagens for all that they do for uniting all of us and giving us this unofficial family reunion that we all look forward to whenever there is one. So, everyone, I am the F4 icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. You met some of my Monster Mania fans and my friends and my family. Um, and those things that they all shared, those are absolutely things that are accurate. They are absolutely true, and they are priceless. And not only are there amazing people guest-wise, there is also amazing vendors, and they're amazing. Everyone really enjoys their time and their efforts and so forth. Um, what I'm doing right now is pulling up what I'm going to do is I'm going to link um, the Monster Mania page into this show tonight so you can see some of the amazing guests that are coming up from Monster Media 52 and also some other information you should have. I will be there as will the, my friends that you just saw and many, many more. We're there to have fun and, and enjoy ourselves as much as you guys are. And yes, this is Mark down here, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is Doug. This is David. This is, well, Dave's around here somewhere. This is big old Dave. And as you can see, they're part of our family. They're part of our friends. And it's always good to see our friends at the family at the Monster Mania. So everyone, um, in a couple of weeks, I'll be doing a Monster Mania. I hope you guys will join us there. Uh, I don't bite. Uh, so if you see me there, by all means, come find me. And I will be happy to say hello to you. And I give autographs and photos for free, by the way, in case people are wondering. And all my other dad jokes, those are also free as well. Um, so everyone, I want to again thank everyone who did stop in tonight. And to everyone who else didn't show up, we're going to have, probably have a, a follow-up, have a kind of recap after the show to see how everyone had it. And I hope everyone can join more. And everyone, I am the F4 icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. This is Friday, so go out there and make your weekend epic. May all your dreams come true from the F4L icon. Sean Jazz Stevens closing down the F4L headquarters podcast for tonight. Peace, everyone. Get home safe.